Hello. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Excellent. I'm doing well. Um, what are you uh, drinking tonight? <laughs> I have an Angry Orchard. Um, it has been very hard to get 12 packs of these lately. And I went to the store and I found one today. So I was very excited. <laughs> and Angry Orchard is like always my drink of choice. That's excellent. Oh, I'm so glad you're able to find it. Yeah, what do you have? Um, today I made myself a mixed drink in this Hawaii glass that um, my um, in-laws gave me. Um, we went to Oahu on our honeymoon, so um, I'm drinking rum with uh, with a pineapple lemonade. It's very good. <laughs> good. Mm. So first of all, you know how are you doing, uh, and how are you dealing with this whole you know onlineness as we go through the COVID nineteen pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I miss going to work <laughs> um, and I miss being able, you know, go out. Everybody does. But I think I'm on day 31 right now, personally, mm -hmm. um, something like that. Um, I did a uh, cave and I ordered a bunch of red hair dye. So I have my moments where I'm like really <laughs> struggling with it. But other times, you know, it's it's nice to be able to relax. Oh, excellent. So are you planning on dyeing your hair red during this? <laughs> yeah, I, I figured it's the best time. I mean, if it looks bad, I have two months to grow it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I'm excited to see how that, how that yeah. turns out. <laughs> I'm nervous. My hair is completely natural colored right now. So I have a wow. lot of hair, but yeah. That is a great, you have nice natural hair color. Yeah, it's very, wow. very long, very dark. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You play Carrie. Mm -hmm. and it, our production and work house uh, of Carrie the Musical. Um, so my first question is, was this a dream role for you? You know, I never really knew the musical Carrie. I knew the movie and like the story. Um, and then when I found out that uh, we were doing it at the work house, um, I listened to it and a few people were like, oh, you would be such a good Chris or such a good Sue. And I listened to it and I was like, no, if I want to be anyone, I want to be Carrie, like such a good character arc. And I mean, they're all great roles, but that was the one that I, you know, was really excited about. Mm -hmm. Oh, so how did you feel like when you actually got the part? Were you surprised at all or? Yeah, it was really exciting, um, especially since the the callbacks were like so intense. There are so many of us that were <laughs> really good for pretty much all the roles. And it was really hard to place because there were so many uh, young women that were uh, great singers <laughs> and could fit into any of like the young female roles that it, as I'm sure for um, Jeff Davis, the director, it was really just a puzzle fitting it all together. But um, I was, very excited when I found out. Excellent, awesome. So um, how did you end up preparing for this role? Uh, so I read the book. Um, mm -hmm. I read the original Stephen King book. Uh, that was actually a really quick read. So if anyone is bored really? during quarantine, it's a, I don't know, I wouldn't say a fun read because it is scary, but it, <laughs> it was a good read and it, was, it went by really quick. Um, mm -hmm. And I also watched Two of, the, I think there are three movie adaptations. One is like really not popular, but I think it's on Netflix. Oh, wow. um, but I did watch the original with Sissy Spacek. And then I watched the one that came out, I want to say in like 2013 with um, mm -hmm. Chloe Grace Moretz. Is that her name? Um, I'm not sure, but I've definitely seen that one. Yeah, I think that's who played Carrie in that one. Um, mm -hmm. So I watched both of those and they're very, um, they're, pretty different um so it was interesting to see that versus the book as well um so that's pretty much where I started yeah oh excellent um cool uh so just for anybody just now tuning in we're here with Barbara Lawson who played Carrie in our production of Carrie the Musical if you have any questions you can throw them in the chat and we'll answer them later um so did you do anything else um in preparation for the role um I know that you uh, that Mary Payne Alejandro played uh, your mother Margaret, who is happens to be your actual real life mom, which She's is my really real mom. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, I was wondering how did that factor into your guys' performance together? Um, I think it really helped. It 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 was great. Um, and those emotions were like so running deep. You know, there's so many different times throughout the show where. Um, Carrie and Margaret, her mother, have like such 
emotional conversations or songs and the fact that it was like me singing to my mother and I know from her perspective like singing to her actual youngest daughter was um definitely really interesting and I think added to it a lot oh excellent was it any was there any difficulties because I know like the the relationship between Carrie and her mom is is so toxic but I'm sure that your relationship with your mom is not like it at all no. <laughs> like no. what how did you have to get into that space? Um, you know, I didn't really find it to be super challenging in that regard. I think maybe it might be a little bit different for my mom since she did have to like a hardcore abuse me. You know, she really threw me across the stage and um, all those kind of fight scenes. And, you know, she did try to stab me, but uh, <laughs> she did stab me. In. But I don't know. I didn't. I didn't find any huge challenges with that. I mean, you know, we have a really good relationship in real life anyway, so we would always go home from rehearsal and the show is laughing and like it, you know, it just worked out well. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> um, all right. What did you particularly like about the Workhouse's performance of Carrie? Um, I really liked that it, it was so small and intimate. Anything that's done at the Workhouse in Studio 3 is going to be small and intimate no matter what mm -hmm. um and i i just i really liked that about this production because i think it is such um it could be done as a huge huge you know spectacle production mm -hmm. um but it doesn't have to be and i think that we showed that with our version right right for those of uh anybody who's watching who doesn't know the workhouse you know is a very small stage it seats about a hundred people mm -hmm. um so very small very intimate um and we're able to create you know very intimate stories because of that yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah and carrie does lend itself to a small stage production mm -hmm. I think, as well yeah i got to actually see the production um and i was very impressed with it <laughs> Um, let's take a look real quick at a couple. Oh, I see. So we got a couple of questions, um, from our, um, panel over here, our chat panel. Um, Anna Strausser says, Barbara, have you acted alongside, alongside your mom before this show? Yes, I have twice at Workhouse actually. So oh. right before Carrie, um, you were also a part of the production of Man of La Mancha. Of course. Right. <laughs> so I was in that with my mother. I was um, the governor uh, and did some ensemble stuff and she was the lead. Um, she played Aldonzo. And um, a few years ago, I think in 2004, 14 we did um nevermore um matt connor's nevermore and we were both in that production together however we really didn't interact at all mm -hmm. during that i feel like there has to be other things that i've done with her um i've definitely been in shows that she's choreographed or costumed before because she does also do both of those things really well and she was in the production meet me in St. Louis when she was pregnant with me. So if you want to count that, then <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, you were born to be on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom's acting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we both got to work with Mary on Man of La Mancha, which was mm -hmm. so fun. Um, I got to do it twice, which was excellent. But yeah. it was really fun having you come in and play the governor. I just... Now that I've done it with two females playing the governor, like I don't want it any other way. Like, no, no. It brings an interesting perspective to the whole show. And it kind of like brings it out of like the misogyny of the original piece. Not that it was meant to be misogynistic in any way. It certainly right. wasn't, but it's because it was made in that golden age and they were setting those boundaries mm -hmm. because they were trying to fight against it actually, but, but actually taking that cap off it and really focusing on, Aldonza is the one who's mainly being persecuted against as a female. I think that was a, a really cool thing that we did. Yeah, I definitely, that was not a role that I um, ever anticipated <laughs> playing, but it was <laughs> definitely a challenge, even though it was such a, a small role. It was a challenge, but I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Um, let's see. Well, I'll ask another question, then we'll go back to our chat. Um, so... Um, you mentioned this before, but Jeff Davis was the director. Um, 
Um, and for those of us who are watching who don't know, he's a um, workhouse favorite. You know, he's directed plenty of stuff at um, with us. He's directed, um, let's see, well, he did Man of La Mancha. He did Carrie. He did The Full Monty and Rocky Horror and Rock of Ages. Um, so he's been all over the workhouse stage mm -hmm. directing for us. And he's he's quite good if I may say so myself having worked with him but how did you so how was working for with him for you um well I have known Jeff and worked with him for about se I want to say seven years now um so I've known him for a really long time he actually cast me in like my first lead in a professional show ever when I was 14. Oh, no. um, <laughs> yeah so I kind of knew what I was getting into working with him I don't no, well, I, I have done a, a pretty good range of both comedic and more dramatic things with him. And I, he definitely does kind of change his directing style a little bit, depending on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I did know a little bit of what I was getting into when I accepted this role and knew that he was the director. He can be really intense sometimes. And he's also hilarious. And I love working with him. But um, that intensity, I think, really brought out the best in all of us for a show in this genre. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I can imagine that his intensity would work well yeah. in that setting. Yeah. For Carrie. <laughs> um, our next uh, chat question is from Danny Seal, who we both know. <laughs> he said, did you ever feel any pressure accepting the role for such an iconic character? Yeah. Um, I think well, definitely the fact that she was an iconic character was, there was a lot of pressure on that, but also the fact that her role is so, so vocally demanding. I was really nervous about that um, because I think there was one time when I was in high school, my friend um, mentioned, oh, hey, you should sing the song Carrie. And I listened to it and I was like, I'm not good enough to sing that. I could never pull that off. No. And I like didn't, didn't touch it. Um, and so when I was offered this role, I was like, okay, I really, uh, especially vocally have to buckle down and make sure that I can, you know, crank this out for every show and not only crank that out, but be able to build on top of it for the character and the emotion and the story arc and the relationships and stuff like that. Oh yeah, for sure. People a lot who aren't familiar with the um, musical theater community, um, you know, probably don't quite realize how challenging it can be to play a character like that. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's not just, you know, there's all the acting involved, which is super important, but then there's also the technicality of it all, which is also super important and super challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's funny. I actually, um, my, I picked up a couple boxes from my, my parents' house cause they're cleaning out my childhood bedroom. <laughs> there was a copy of Carrie, like the, mu like the sheet music to that song. And I was like, when did I ever, <laughs> um, that's definitely not a role that I think I could see myself playing. <laughs> it is a tough one, especially vocally. That was, that was tough. <laughs> quite, quite. Yeah. Um, Let's see, let's move on to another question that I have for you. Oh, this is just a little fun one. I noticed that a few days ago that you created a musical tier list <laughs> um, and I quite enjoyed it. Um, and uh, it, just for everybody's sake, a tier list just ranks, you know, different things in a category. And for this one, it was different musicals and like whether or not they are, uh, you know, you can listen to them or, and whether or not you enjoy them. So. I noticed that Carrie was not quite in the top tier for you. It was right below and sort right. of in the A tier, not in the S tier. So I want to know what makes it A tier, but not S tier. Um, okay, so I guess my top, top tier ones are probably ones that are a little bit more nostalgic to me. Like I grew up listening to or... Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not typically into more of the pop rock musicals which carrie is mm -hmm. and um i saw a lot of people actually on those tiers putting carrie really low down and i do remember when i first listened to the show there were a lot of songs that were standouts to me but a few songs here and there i was like but why and so i wasn't in love with it when i first heard it but after actually being able to work with it like I did fall in love with it so I think working on it really bumped it up a few more tears for me 
Got it. Yeah. I find that to be something that happens to me as well. Um, I never liked Jesus Christ Superstar until I assistant choreographed it. And all of a sudden I was like in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's funny how that happens too. Yeah. Um, cool. Let's go to another chat question. So Jim Lawson, who I believe is your father question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um says that cherish wants to know if it was scary playing carrie cherish is my little 10 year old sister um <laughs> yeah uh i don't think i ever got really scared it was definitely dark but um i was more sometimes i was a little bit scared about some of the special effects but they always worked out i was more scared about them going wrong than anything else so. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about some of those special effects, like what they were and how you guys pulled them off? Yeah, so we we had uh, one point um, with her telekinesis, she, Carrie, um, knocked over a chair. Uh, and that we had with um, really, really thin, I believe it was fishing wire, was just strung all the way off the edge of our stage. And I believe it was Danny Seal our stage manager who kind of yanked the chair whenever I, you know, used my powers and that kind of knocked it over and pulled it. Um, we also had uh, in our little closet, prayer closet scene, a crucifix cross that would rise up into the air and kind of go back down. That was also done with fishing wire. And I believe Michael Omahundro, who is my stepfather and also played the principal, I believe he was the one that was pulling it, but I was always on the other side of the wall. So I, I think he was the one that pulled it. <laughs> um, and then of course there's the infamous blood, <laughs> um, which is a whole, a whole nother story, but uh, we did have a bucket that was set up um, by Joseph Wallen and it was filled with a blood mixture of kind of paint and I believe flour, um, maybe some water that our stage manager would put together. And then uh, Casey Farrow, who played Billy, actually pulled a cord and the cord that he pulled was the cord that pulled the bucket. Oh my goodness. So it was real like happening to you yeah. guys. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was actually him. He really controlled it every night. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you how being a, you know, a, um, you know, the performing arts coordinator, I ended up cleaning up the blood on the stage. I uh, bet. <laughs> it, it was caked. Yeah. That flower did a number on it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure washing that off every night was quite something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. We've got several more questions on the chat, which is excellent. So Great. we'll go ahead and hit those. Um, so, Joshua, um, who was who worked with us in Man of La Mancha, wants to know what was it like working with the telekinetic effects in the show? Was there a point in the rehearsal process where the effects were suddenly all there and working and it felt real to you, or were you always aware of how it all worked? Uh, yeah, there was a good portion of the rehearsal where I just wasn't exactly sure how it was going to work or what it was going to look like for pretty much all the effects. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think there was one specific day where like all three of them clicked at once. I think we added them pretty, um, individually, mm -hmm. but once they did all work, it was really exciting. Um, especially the blood cause it, it really just amps up that last song and the last kind of, uh, number and, um, we actually practiced with some just mixture without the coloring in it a couple times um, before actually putting in the coloring so we didn't have to, you know, wash the dress and get the color out of everything. Mm. Um, but that in itself, adding that was a huge step up, I think, helped me emotionally for that last big hurrah that Carrie has. Absolutely. Right. So did it feel when you were in it occasionally, like me as an actor, sometimes if I'm really getting into it, it actually feels like it's happening to me. Did, mm -hmm. did that ever happen to you with the telekinesis? Like, were you like so in it that like, it's almost as if you're actually doing it? I think with the telekinesis, it's, it was a little bit more difficult because those um, spots in the show itself in the book are really isolated. Um, so there wasn't a ton of, you know, build up to scenes with those ones, but the, the blood was uh, such a long build up, almost 
half of act two is really just takes place in the gym with all of the people and the audience knows what's gonna happen. We're in this setting, like we're not leaving this room until the blood has been dropped. So I think that one really lent itself more to me feeling um, like it was really happening to me. Right, oh my gosh, that scene, if anybody hasn't seen um, that scene in the musical, like definitely try to check out like a clip of it. That's It's a very powerful scene. <laughs> um, all right, our next chat question. Um, was it scary working with your mom? I know we talked a little bit about that, um, about how you've worked with her before, but yeah, was it scary to you? It's always a little bit intimidating, um, just cause she's my mom and she's been doing this a lot longer than I have, but you know, I have learned so much from her and I still continue to do so. So I would say maybe a little intimidating, but I wasn't necessarily scared. <laughs> right. You know, that's something that I didn't think about originally. Um, you know, none of my family members are in theater at all so it's like a brand new thing and whenever they try to coach me i'm like, <laughs> I'm like you don't know you know but you know but for you having you know a mother who's been doing this forever uh it must almost put some pressure on you as a, as a performer or maybe it does maybe it doesn't maybe it's a good thing uh i'd like to hear your thoughts on that yeah i don't know i definitely I did go to college um, for musical theater and I definitely have um, a different experience than a lot of people because so many people have uh, your story where they're like kind of the pioneer in their family for arts or theater. Um, and I really don't relate to that because most, if not all people in my family are really big supporters of the arts or uh, performers are practicing the arts in some way or another. So it was just kind of, you know, normal for me. And I really grew up with it around me my entire life. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Um, and let's see, it looks like our last chat question here says, what type of stage blood was used in Carrie? Was it tough to clean off every night? Yeah. So I did mention that it was kind of a mixture of flour and some like acrylic paint. Um, I think some water and it, I think the worst part about it was that the flower would kind of coagulate after a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so I would have to really, really work to get that out of my hair. But the nice thing was that there was a lovely shower backstage, which if that hadn't have been there, I truly don't know what I would have done. I would have had to like hose off in the back or something. Um, but it it came off of me every night. It didn't stain anything. It came off of the dress every night. So, you know, it's pretty much all I could ask for, I guess. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And so you said it came off the dress all right? Mm, yeah. Every night we had two dresses just so we didn't have to wash and dry them every night. But it, it always came off. No oh, problem. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're nearing the end here. I've gone through all my questions. We've gone through all the uh questions on the chat um any last you know things you want to share with us um about you know playing carrie or or just being an actor in general <laughs> um i guess just keep supporting the arts as much as you can during this time it's really tough for everyone and i think you know we're all also really realizing how much we do rely on the arts even though we can't really necessarily rely on live theater right now. I don't really know anyone who's not been watching Netflix or Hulu or live TV or listening to music or movies or anything like that. So just a nice lesson that we're able to learn during these unfortunate times. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that reminds me, um, there is a, a GoFundMe event going on with uh, the workhouse right now. We, uh, you know, we are a nonprofit. So, you know, every little bit helps and um, mm -hmm. uh, money will also help to uh, go help go to supporting our, our performers and our actors, um, especially the ones who will be, uh, you know, sending in videos for our virtual cabarets. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we can get Barbara on there soon. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for, um, for being with me, Barbara, today. Yeah. Um, and thank you to everybody who is watching currently and was watching and will watch in the future because this will be up. Um, I'm going to throw down that link in the chat after I pop out of here. Um, and you all have a great night. Yeah, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your drink. Oh, thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.